Hello dear ones, Father Peter John coming to you from the woods, Bloomington, Indiana. Christ is in our midst. I wanted to talk tonight about another fool for Christ, Saint Simeon of Emassa. And Emassa is a present day Homs, Syria. Um, he was born there in the 6th century and lived there with his mother until he was 20. At the age of 20, he and his best friend John, um, later on known as uh, Deacon John, they went to uh, a monastery in the desert and then went uh, off by themselves into further into the desert to live by the Dead Sea. They lived there together um, for 29 years. And um, they were, again, best friends. They were kind of sworn to protect one another, you know, keep one another accountable as, as monks. And after 29 years, uh, Simeon received word from God that he was to go back to his hometown of uh, Emasa, where his, his mother had died. And he was to go there basically to live a life calling people to uh, repentance, preaching the gospel. Well, his only concern with this was that he didn't want to kind of gain a following. He didn't want people to think that he was this righteous one. He didn't want to receive the praise of men. So he besought the Lord that the Lord would allow him to do to preach the gospel, to call people to repentance as a fool for Christ. And so that's what he did. He walked into the city of Emasa, and um, after he arrived there, he went to the church. <laughs> I'm sorry, these stories. He went to the church, and he walked into the church, and as a sign uh, of the people's sin and their lack of faith, he went in the beginning of liturgy, and he blew out all of the candles in the church, right? Now, keep in mind, this is 1,500 years ago. There were not lights on and candles like we have today. I mean, that was the light, right? So he blew out all the candles in the church. And then uh, people were real ticked off at him. He, so he had these um, nuts in his hands, and he was breaking the shells in his hands like this. So people became mad. And so then he started throwing nuts at the women who were, you know, screaming at him in the liturgy, okay? Um, so anyway, then as he's leaving, you know, there were these pastry bakers who were out in front of the church to sell their pastries after liturgy, because everyone's hungry after the liturgy. And as he was leaving, uh, he overturned all of their tables. Well, they, everybody, I mean, they jumped on him and they beat him up and they, they, they tried, treated him terribly. Um, and there was this one, um, well, this is a great story. There was this one vendor uh, outside the church that was selling kind of a some kind of a liqueur right and um so they they saw him there and he was wearing this monk's garb and they they kind of had compassion on him sort of and so they said hey you want to come and sell this stuff for us and you know you can sell lupine seeds and this and that and he said oh sure so he uh he he went there and and he he hadn't eaten for a week right so he's selling their lupine seeds um, but he's not selling them, actually. He, he's pretending to sell them. What he's actually doing is he's giving them away, and he's eating them. I didn't even know you could eat lupine seeds. But anyway, another story, apparently. So then there's also all these other jars of these goods and things, and he's just giving them away to people and just blessing everybody on the street with these free goods. So they get to the end of the day, and they come. There's the wife is so excited, the wife of the vendor. She's so excited that he sold all this stuff. And she goes to open the, the money box and realizes there's nothing there and that he's given everything away, you know. And so, the, you know, she and the vendor go, and they're hitting him. They're so mad, and he's giving away all, their, all of their stuff. And so, uh, anyway, he's, he's, he's beaten half to sleep, and he's laying outside their door. And uh, they're inside... And um, there's a fire built there. Well, he decides he it's the end of the day. He wants to offer, just like we do at Vespers, we offer incense at Vespers for the end of the day. And so he wants to offer incense to Christ. Well, he's looking around for um, a, a potsherd, you know, like a, a shell, so he can uh, put the coal and the incense in there and say his prayers. Well, he can't find one anywhere. And so nobody's looking. And so he goes and he puts his hand into the fire and he takes a handful of coal in his hand and then he takes incense and he sprinkles it on top and he's sitting there and he's saying his prayers and the incense is rising and the wife of the merchant walks out 
and sees him and she screams. And so he realizes that she, she's found him out, right? So, you know, he quickly, oh no, oh no, oh, I'm burning, I'm burning. He's pretending that it's burning him. But just like the three holy children in the fire weren't consumed by the flame, just like the, the bush that burnt on Sinai was not consumed by the flame, so also God protected uh, St. Simeon's hand from the coals. And uh, anyway, just a, I, I love that story. I heard that story 25 years ago. I've been looking for it ever since. I couldn't remember the name of the saint. And here he was, this Simeon. Um, I could tell a hundred other stories. I, I am gonna tell one more. Um, so there were these, these Hippodrome fans. Now the Hippodrome, you know, uh, there, there were these races and I'm mean, just a debauchery and stuff going on. And so he did not like the Hippodrome fans. He wanted them to quit going to the Hippodrome. And so he's walking down the road and he sees these 10 Hippodrome fans, you know, and they're you know, getting their clothes ready, fancy clothes. They're going to go down to the Hippodrome, I guess. And so uh, anyway, he says to him, he says, leave the folly of the Hippodrome and I, uh, come and I will make you a gourmet lunch. Well, they knew he was this, they, they knew he was poor, right? He was always begging for food. And so, but, but they know that he's also this monk who sometimes does these really holy deeds. And so they're like, well, five of them, they're hungry. And they're like, all right, let's go. So they follow him, and uh, he says, wait here. And he goes out uh, and, and, and begins to pray out in this field. And he's out there praying, and they start talking to themselves. They're like, this monk's going to bring us a, a gourmet feast of grass. We know this guy. He doesn't have any money. So why did we do this? We left the Hippodrome buddies, and now here we are. And as they're talking, he says, brothers, come. And so uh, they get up, and they go, and they walk over to him. And as, they're there, as they approach him, they look and they see these beautiful loaves of uh, wheat bread. And they see these fish and spiced meatballs and, and uh, wonderful, wonderful bottles of wine or flasks of wine, I guess, in those days. And they cannot believe their eyes. And he says, come and feast. And so they're eating and they're just feasting and they cannot believe this wonderful feast. They're so excited. And he says to them... If you, if you agree to never go back to the Hippodrome, he said, you will have ample fresh wheat bread all the rest of the days of my life. As long as I'm alive, you will have ample fresh bread. Well, so they thought, well, this is too good to be true. And so they decided among themselves, they said, listen, let's give this a week. And if the bread doesn't run out, then we're, forget the Hippodrome because we're sticking with the bread. So that's what they did. They gave it a week. And at the end of a week, they had just as much bread as they had at the beginning of the week. And it was still fresh and they couldn't believe it. So in this way, uh, these, these uh, uh, Hippodrome fanatics were um, converted to Christ. And three of them actually, we're told, became monks. Such great stories about this wonderful saint. He is a fool for Christ. He did some crazy, crazy things. There's a whole little book written on his life, and some of it you read it and you blush and you go, oh my goodness, how did he get away with that? Um, but uh, I, I just, I kind of saved the clean ones for you here. Uh, so that's it. Saint Simeon of Emasa. Uh, pray unto God for us that we too will be wise in Christ if foolish by the world's standards. Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be.